to your people, it ain't nothing real. Pass the power to your people, it ain't nothing real. Pass the power to your people, it ain't nothing real. Elevated innovation over ignorance. I represent. What's up, everybody? We're back at the Beast Camp Podcast. I'm here with Rev and a special guest. But first of all, how you doing, Rev? I'm doing good, bro. Hey. We got the new light set up. Right? <laughs> if you guys aren't watching this on YouTube. We, we um, look immaculate. <laughs> step again. <laughs> um, yeah, today is a really special and random uh, podcast. Like, I was just going to train with the homie, and I was just thinking, man, uh, for sure. You know, you, you know when you always talk after or before you start dancing, and it's just jams, man. Like, you know, I, I want to record those type of things. So, especially with this character, bro, he is amazing, and I'm going to learn a lot of stuff just like you guys are as the listeners so without further ado we got tony ray in the building yeah what's good yes sir yes sir yes sir so yeah man for this episode just lay us lay us your history you know what i mean like where did you come from your your training regimens how you get become a god (laughs) <laughs> don't be saying how, that how don't do you be that. floating on the dance floor you like what up. you do <laughs> uh all right yeah word um yeah what's up y'all so for those of you who don't know me um and for those of you who do know me i'm still tony ray coming yes. out of san diego uh, yes. california born and raised i um, 26 years old i've been dancing f- now for the last six years nice. um so when i first started actually um well i grew up loving to dance and all that right like mm-hmm. um Anytime I saw music videos or like dance movies, and it wasn't just like, you know, strictly related to like hip hop music. Like I loved, shoot, um, can we cuss? Did we do that? Yeah. yeah okay. So. I just wanted to make sure nah, that I didn't. Yeah. Just, I, I, I bam. It. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are like, <laughs> ah, we gotta cut that. it's like it's like one of those things where right. we don't have to push the button right. until it's a it's a little bit too much. Right. right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Too. Cool. 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 I just wanted to make sure that I knew my limits. Okay. Anyway, so. Love it. Um, <laughs> Like, uh, a movie that sticks out to me, I think what it's called is Save the Last Dance, which was like, yes. uh, like a, you know, I think that's the salsa movie. Yes. I think. And um, They do salsa in that movie? I think so. I don't know. I saw one. Hips I, was moving. I, Hips might was be, moving. I might be mis, you know, remembering. Uh, but, I mean, the, the song that stuck out to me, and if it's not even this movie, it could be another movie, but I'm pretty sure it's this one, uh, okay. was, uh, <laughs> that song is like, Eh, Magdalena, Ozo. Hey, yeah, yeah. Like that one? Oh yeah. my god. And then it's so like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, like, when I saw them dancing to that, okay. Growing up, I just loved to sing dance. That's yes. what I'm trying to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yes. So, and I was naturally moving as a kid, but I, I, was, I didn't get put in like dance classes or whatever. I just kind of liked the freestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, I tried a class like when I was in high school. I wasn't really into it. It was actually at Culture Shock in San Diego. Shout and, out. Uh, Shout outs. I don't know if um, a good shout out. Yeah, shout outs real quick. He wasn't feeling it. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I, 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 hey, I was like, class, I was fifteen. I, I was fifteen, and and I wasn't, I wasn't shout into out. it at that time. Still at that time. So, so, but still, right. shout outs because I was introductory. You know, I just, you know, right. I was, I was feeling it out. Um, no shade. Um, so, cause I don't even remember the class to be honest. It was like a long time ago. But like one of the biggest inspirations that I had, besides like movies and of course TV shows, like what, right, like the ABDCs and mm-hmm. the, the So You Think You Can Dances and stuff. Like right. growing up, um, was actually a competition called Fusion Dance Competition, which was at UCSD. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right, and I remember uh, one of my favorite teams, and still one of my dream teams. Like if I would ever be on like a community dance team to this day is none other than grv yeah. like oh, that's okay. like some yeah. shout outs because i love y'all Crazy. y'all go hard and ham yeah man and uh where where is grv located i think in walnut like that's where they train okay mm-hmm. so now you know where they're at yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody i have get uh, i have no. one of our old students she was barely with us but yeah she was already way better than we actually providing for her <laughs> uh, but she, she was but. she joined gravy babies after she realized great. that we weren't doing that great uh yeah yeah, so yeah i uh i mean i even went as far i showed up twice i think like once i showed up one year to an audition and people were like wait what and i was like it's time and i couldn't show up for the second one because teaching and then traveling and i was like oh fuck uh and then i showed up the next year and i was like it's time and people were like what and then i was like yeah part two and then And then, yeah, I got busy again. I tried to travel. I couldn't make it a second <laughs> one. I was like, fuck. On you know, like, I really wanted to be on this team. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> still do. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so 
fusion dance competition, saw them, and got really inspired, and I would nice. just like copy everything. Of course, like that's what you did, like in at least in my generation. Um, uh, you know, you saw things on YouTube. Like if you weren't like in the community, like you just kind of grew up watching it, yeah, and just yeah. trying to copy, like because you just liked it. Um, yeah. But then when uh, when I got out of college, because um, I, I stopped after like my first year, because mm. um, I, I played soccer all my life and all that. Explains and, uh, the footwork. Yeah, but, uh, explain, you know, the explains footwork. the quickness yeah, of the feet. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I play, okay, so just so y'all know, I did martial arts uh, for years, yes. and then uh, I played soccer as well what, since uh, I was, like, five years old. What position did you play in soccer? I was, uh, since I was, like, one of the only people on my team that could use the left foot, it was anywhere on the left side of the field. All right, um, all right. right but uh, mostly left defense. Okay. Um, but... Uh, or left wing, you know, yeah, left, I, left mid or left see, forward. I like. played soccer like all my life too, mm. and it, it, for some reason it was like a very easy transition from soccer into dance. I right? Don't know why? Every yeah, time totally. It must have been the yeah. footwork. Yeah, for sure. yeah, no, totally. You kind right, you have I, that I'm understanding. <laughs> yeah, let's go play. You know, we we, we, we kick around. You know, yes. kick it around. Um, but yeah, so like after you know, in my first year of college, I went to community college because you know I was a knucklehead in school and I didn't mm. try. Cause I didn't care. I got like senioritis in third grade, if y'all know what that is. Um, so it was bad. Ahead of I was time. like, yeah, way ahead of my time. I was like, <laughs> man, this is some bullshit. <laughs> I'm done. I checked out in third grade. Oh, anyway, so, uh, but you know, I, I played all my life, and then when I got to college, I just kind of was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. Like, this doesn't, this doesn't feed me. Like, I'm not happy. I don't know what I'm doing. And mm. then after I stopped playing soccer, which was my whole reason of life mm. up to that point, and also going to college, I was like, well, what do I do now? Mm. Mm. And so then I just stopped going to school because I was like, well, I don't know what I want to do and I want to pay all this money. So I just got a job like at a restaurant, which I happened to get because I was at a party hey. um, and I was tired of refereeing soccer because that's BS. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do it. That's the first job. You ever thought about today. it? That was my first job, <laughs> refereeing soccer. It was the worst. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. Like you, you parents thinking their, their five-year-old kid is men's men's soccer league you know like international uh, women's soccer league like you know like i thought it was the best and i was just like they'd be like referee he shoved him i was like your kid doesn't know how to walk yet yeah <laughs> comfortably right without yeah. tripping over the clumps in the field like right. the field is bad right you can't even tell me that and your kid's over there eating boogers so i don't oh, know what you're talking about you know that, like, that's a that's a heavier problem you know, right I, was like, <laughs> you know I was like damn <laughs> anyway, so, um, you know, after, after college, uh, you know, I got this job because my friend had saw me at a party mm. and I was just dancing because, you know, good music. We're all just having fun. And uh, we stayed in contact. She posted, a, you know, like, hey, restaurant's hiring. And I was like, I need to find a job just for right now, make some money. Just mm. kind of like, you know, while I float for a second, just kind of figure it all out. And my boss ended up being a B-girl. Mm, okay. Like SD B-girl, uh, B-girl China. So shout out Stacey Punkini. Uh, you know, B Girl China. Uh, she's actually the owner of the restaurant. She's a very successful businesswoman, and I'm nice. incredibly proud to be a part of her, you know, business. And nice. she's helped me through my journey, like yes, a thousandfold. Like I was, I remember one day I had a conversation with her, and I was like, "Look, I, I gotta go to Amsterdam, mm. and then Japan after. Yeah, and it might <laughs> be like two months. So I understand, you know, like if if you, you can't accept that." And she right. was like. Okay, cool. Go ahead. And I was like, that's, that's yeah, really I know. Dope. I get what? That's really dope. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like exactly yeah, right. Yeah. And I was just like, okay. Is she's she like, hiring? yeah, when you come Is back. Is she hiring right now? <laughs> Is she hiring? Yeah, I mean, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, she was just really understanding because she lived the dance life as well, yes, you know? Yes. Um, I think that, didn't you have a couple professors mm -hmm. that were on that same type of tip? Yep. Yeah. Because you were, you were traveling yeah. a lot in your, in your like yeah. prime. Mm hmm. Yeah, when I was in a uh, university, um, mm -hmm. kind of same situation. I just had to lay it out to my professors, like I'm gonna be gone for a month, and yeah. and university, yeah, is that that's a lot. So you right. have to drop me, and they're like, no, just come back and catch up. And right, like, Whoa. so that's it's dope. really rare, man. Yeah, no, for real. Really rare. I mean, yeah. and it, it's nice to be able to to be up front like that and have that kind of conversation and open communication, right. you know, and just kind of like really say it with your chest, like this is my life. And for them to accept that, it's like really empowering, you know? Yeah. And my boss did that for me and I was like, damn. So yeah, so anyway, she, she got me um, into dance because she's like, oh, I heard you like to dance from my other coworker and you should try going to the studio, which was Culture Shock, which then brought me to the open floor, which was where I saw House for the first time mm. and the journey started from there and yes. here we are. The origin story. The origin yes. story. So yeah, House, 
pretty sure I talked about this before, like somewhere, but yeah, the house was the first thing that I saw and I fell in love instantly. I was like, what the hell is happening in here? Mm, mm. Like what's going on? And right. my San Diego house heads like with open arms, like just welcomed me. First yeah. like 10 seconds of me walking in, my, my mentor, his name's Reggie, mm-hmm. short little Filipino dude. <laughs> he was like, uh, he just looked at me and was like, hey, you're new. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. I am. Yeah. Yes, I am. He's just like, hey, like, what's up? Like, and he just, you know, he just introduced himself. Like, said, hey, these are these people, and Love I it. just got to know everybody like instantly. Yeah. And then like, I just danced every day. I found what it was that I was missing. Yeah. You know, in life. And um, what do you think that was? I mean, just something that really fulfilled me, mm. like to my core. Mm. Right. Because mm. when I did martial arts and when I played soccer. I never practiced those in my free time. Mm. I would actually throw some headphones on and just like dance, you know? Yeah. And uh, actually I remember when I was, when I was doing martial arts, cause I did wushu, okay. uh, as well as chelly fuck kung fu, like white dragon. Okay. Um, if I got any white dragoners out there, <laughs> shout outs. Um, <laughs> you know what shout I'm saying? Outs. They called the, <laughs> yeah, I know it, it was a time in my life. When I did wushu, when I made the transition, I was 14, um, and I was doing the third world traditional championships in China in a, in a city Sheesh. called Shen. And I remember in this like really insanely lavish hotel, not, to, like, not trying to brag, but what I'm saying is I remember going out into the courtyard at like 8 a.m. because my sleep schedule was all messed up and I was actually mm-hmm. awake. And instead of practicing my forms, I had my headphones on and like my USA like jumpsuit like yeah. wushu team USA yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was just dancing nice and I was like and I look back on it and I'm like what the hell was I doing right like yo you were there for like much <laughs> lights like you know what are you country. doing dancing in the courtyard you know what I mean <laughs> like you're totally not there for this <laughs> you need um, to get ready to whoop some and that was ass. actually right and that was my first time actually ever dancing or going to a club I was 14 and I, I was with like some elders I won't name names so that they don't get shamed <laughs> but uh Good, good Gone. influence. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Um, but they took me to the club and they're like, Tony, we got you. Here's the orange juice. You're going to drink orange juice. This is your orange juice. Ah. Like, we, like, no, you don't get to drink this. This is the OJ. We're going to take care of you. And yeah, I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I'm just in this club and I got offers to like dance in the club because they're like, oh, you're great. Like, I was that's, like, that's really dope because like, really there's, funny. there's like not, like it's really cool when you have these people in your life that yeah. are like willing to take you into maybe the sketchier yeah oh it was situation, sketch. <laughs> but right. are still gonna but, look yeah, out yeah. for you and make sure that especially at a young age yeah oh yeah oh, that was mad funny <laughs> they love they showed me so much love yeah. too. yeah and that's such a big part of the culture too of just dance like right. in those type of trenches or those right. type of like environments you mm-hmm. know not like the studios or you know like kind of like what we have now which is great yeah but the rawness and the mm. that type of experience like is what we try to duplicate in the studios right. or in like you know the competitions and mm. stuff so yeah it, it shows in your dancing man do you, do you think that has a a play in like your dance of just you like mean? how like you were involved in those type of sceneries like you know I, mean, what I mean yeah like i think i mean one just being able to see um I mean, my adult friends, like, at that time, because, like, you know, when you're young, like, you like to have, you know, older fr- right. like, you know, older people yeah, to kick yeah, it yeah. with and, and think yeah. you're smarter than you are, you right. know what I'm saying? Be like, oh, you're so bright. And you're like, yeah, like, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not this age. Like, I'm cool. Right. Um, but I'm an old soul. <laughs> yeah, old, exactly, you know, like, and, but it was enough for them to bring me to the club with them. Some of them were, like, 20, like 25, 26, 27, you know, at the time, and they were just, like, they're like, nah, we're gonna have some fun. Like, he's mm. gonna have a good time. Like, they took care of me, and it does play into it because I look back at that and just the the care that they had, yeah. you know, like yeah. plays into like how you know I move in this in the dance community exactly. and in life. Yeah. So like, just like being able to look out for others in that way and kind of guide and 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 give people opportunity in that way to experience life mm-hmm. um, is really important to me. So yeah, it's fully played out yeah, in my life sure. in that way. Yeah, 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 man. About five minutes left. No ways, no ways. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, all that being said, um, <clears throat> all that being said is that uh, I know, I know, I had a little. No, I know, I had a little. No, I know it's because it, I just wanted to make a point of it that that happened. So I, just, I had to be the one that said it, you know. So that when they, it, that, they that was an exclamation. They comment, Yeah, that was like, okay. yeah, it did happen. You heard right. You heard right. Okay. Um, <laughs> 
So yeah, it just it, it's played a, a huge part in my life. So um, like all those experiences, what was missing was dance. Like right. Right. I was doing it in my free time. Yeah, you yeah. know. And when I had finally like in high school, I was doing it. I would at lunch if music was playing, I'd be dancing in the mm. in the mm. in the yard. You know, like mm. all my friends knew me as a dancer in high school because yeah, I would just get yeah. down, have fun. Like I didn't care. Yeah, you know, there was no techniques. It was just like have fun. Yeah, would you say um, like you didn't have like a training regimen? You were just not in, not not until I turned twenty. Like mm. the first time I stepped in the studio, all mm. I did was like maybe watch some YouTube videos and like and learn some dance. like you know some yeah. stuff. Like I mean, I just went through whatever was cool. Like the wave of jerking. Right. We still do that. You know, yeah. we still do that. You know, yeah. um, all that. Like I remember. Melbourne shuffling at one point in my life, see so walking, oh. you know, like doing all that. Like I had a time, hard style with, you know, hard yeah, style. Yeah, yeah. We were out it's here. I was fourteen. Cool, yeah. I was fourteen. Okay. okay, I was a young kid. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, <laughs> none the wiser. I mean, that's still pretty popular. Right? It's yeah, still very popular. Oh, it's, it's popular. super popular. And it's they be hitting popular. me up. They be it's hitting me up. Popular. Like, yo, we doing this, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, yeah, like respect, full respect. It's a lifestyle. It is. <laughs> all right. Um, but anyway, so. Uh, as far as like moving into the dance world and in and, and my dance career, like training regimen and all that, um, my first six months of dance, like I, I mean, I have money now because I was working at the restaurant, so I mm-hmm. could afford to go take class, and mm-hmm. I wasn't going to school, so I had time. So shout out to money. Shout out to money. Mm-hmm. What's good? Work hard for it. Um, you know, <laughs> um, or make it work for you. Oh, hey business yo. mentality, that's right? Me, Preferably that one. Yes. Um, yes. You know, working my way there. Working my way there. Um, <laughs> In time. Uh, so, yes, um, I was able to take class three nights or three times a week, uh, three times a night. Sorry. Sheesh. Uh, Monday through Friday. Nice. Monday through Friday, I would take three classes a night, and then Monday night I have the house session for like two hours, mm-hmm. and we would just get down for forever. So every night I was dancing, and I was tired as hell. So mm-hmm. fifteen classes a week in a month that's sixty classes. I did that for six months straight. Sheesh. Wow. And this that was, was that was were... choreo, that was hip hop, that was I would take some jazz funk classes. I even bought some tap shoes, which I need to get into and actually commit to. <laughs> um, but you know, I was like all across the board because I was trying to figure out like, okay, like what what fills me, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, and I found what I liked, which was house and, and choreo as well, because I was doing that from the beginning. Not the cleanest with the details, but you know, I can I can hang for a minute. Yeah. I can hang with my homies. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. Um, but yeah, and so like that was kind of my first six, and that set me up to just enjoy myself and love everything about this shit oh, that's you know some what I mean? hardcore training right from there, there right? like i was able to i was doing all that and then dancing in my backyard till like 6 a.m sheesh there's yeah it was people would non-stop see me on my instagram story because i would always like time stamp it yeah. you know it was like 2 a.m oh he's just still there at 4 a.m oh it's 6 a.m dang he has work at 9 a.m dang. you yeah. know and i was doing that every day because i was just like this is the greatest thing in my that's, life that's love right there yeah like, you know and so what you're doing. it was insane but um so and then yeah after um you know after a couple months of that i kind of started to tone it down because it was also affecting my work life mm-hmm. and my sleeping schedule mm-hmm. and i was i was becoming a sucky employee um you know and and it was the worst and people hated me um Mm -hmm. but when i finally toned down and i was able to kind of focus in um you know on what i was doing it it got a lot better i was able to you know focus on my dance as well and kind of tune up travel battle as well you know sharpen you know iron sharpens iron yes sir you know testing my skills against other people was a part of the training regimen yeah exchanging and a big part of that was coming to la going to japan for a couple months going to new york and yeah, and all yeah, that man. culminating to what I am now. Sheesh. So what would you say, like, would be an advice? Like, how would you use your origin story mm-hmm. or, like, your crazy training regimen? Like, how can you use that to, like, give advice to, like, people mm-hmm. trying to, like, pick up dance now? Right, right, you know right. What I mean? uh, like, super bluntly, put the fucking work in. There it is. That's all? That's, that's, that's it. it. So that that is, it is so simple. So Granted, simple. there are quick ways of learning, of course. Like there's, you know, as we learn, like, you know, we're able to break down things a little yes. bit faster so people can learn faster. But at the end of the day, what you have to do is commit to yourself if you want it and you go chase the shit out of it. Boom. And that's what it is. <laughs> and and he there's is... A product of that, <laughs> yep. and that's why I am where I am right, right. Now. confidently so, too. Yeah. yeah, good man, all day. <laughs> <laughs> like yo, so that's as it. you guys heard it, man, that's just a little piece of who Tony Ray is. Please 
follow him on Instagram, Facebook. You have a Twitter? I do, but I don't. It don't, don't, don't use it. Either. Okay. It don't, it's not that. It's, it's not. You know, <laughs> Instagram is where people would find yeah, Instagram, you. Instagram, yeah, at the Roni Tay. Yeah, at yeah. the Roni Tay. The Roni Tay. I you love it. Can you spell that out real quick? Yeah. Uh, shit. Okay. T H E R O N Y T A Y. The Roni Tay. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, guys, this is one of two episodes that we'll have Tony on here. So yeah. you guys got to know him. Look him up. He's one of the best dancers of our time right now. <laughs> so, man, it's so dope to hear where he came from. And now it makes sense. And we just love to know people for who they are because their dance is just a reflection of it. So now look at his videos because I will look at his videos again and then stuff will make sense because of his soccer background and uh-huh. yeah, his yeah, martial yeah. arts background yeah, i said yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay yeah. i see the invisible ball that you're playing now. <laughs> right, 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 right. so i mean hey yeah this is why we do these things because dancers we are very loud with move movement but we want to uh, raise the volume up with our words Ooh, that was Ooh. pretty cool okay, that's great. right oh, that's great. Let's get it. all right on, see now. you guys on the next episode Peace. it'll drop in a couple days out. Peace. And we back, everybody. What's yeah, we back. good? <laughs> yeah, we back. We, we back. back. We back. back. Uh, that was like a, I felt like a new, like a not a news, like a radio show, radio show host. What song was playing? Hey. <laughs> oh, Let it play. Beast Camp Radio. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. So we got Tony Ray in the house. Yeah. Uh, yes, if you guys didn't listen. I don't know why I'm still wearing my headphones. Uh, if you guys didn't listen to the uh, <laughs> to the last one, y'all gotta jump on that. It's yeah. so real. Yeah. I uh, found out that Tony is a soccer player, uh, left side defense. So that's <laughs> that's fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what do we have? Uh, what do we have on the uh, agenda for the second episode? Uh, today, since it's crazy times, especially as an artist, um, being affected by quarantine. Not having work, not seeing your friends uh, overseas, and not even having work overseas. And even with the current events today of, you know, of police brutality and everything in politics and how it kind of makes us as artists, like, you know, kind of want to use our artistry to help have a voice in, in that. And even in our personal lives, like, we're just so affected by it. So we just want to know how the homie's doing today and mm-hmm. with all of that. And um, for sure, he's going to drop um, just some gems of how he's keeping himself up there because, you know, everyone, we're all going through it. But as you can see, if you follow him on Instagram and all that, he's super vulnerable, super strong. And man, like like we said, we just want to use this platform to give a voice to our dancers. Yeah. So, yeah, let's yeah. take the mic. Tony Ray, how are you? really doing in these times yo man uh (laughs) if i were to be completely transparent right now i would say i'm 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 pretty fucked but i mean i won't get too deep into it but i definitely had um one of the hardest lessons Mm. uh you know uh to to learn Mm. uh in 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 my entire life thus far Mm. you know Mm. and uh pretty much had to tear away at myself and and go bare bones with who I am Mm. and uh you know what I value and you know what I want to work for and work towards and what Mm. I'm able to give you know um uh, I won't get too deep into that so I don't start crying right now you know what I'm (laughs) saying but uh just know that I had a I had a huge a huge ass lesson Mm. um and I'm still learning from it uh, yeah. currently. Um, nah, bro, I'm on the same boat, yeah. my brother. Like, um, we were talking before this podcast, mm. just like catching up, and he said something that I was living by since quarantine started, where you said, um, kind of that phoenix rising out of yeah. the ashes. You know, like yeah, I'm yeah, a yeah. big uh, Jordan Peterson fan right now, and uh, that's one of the analogies that mm. he he says is that uh, you learn things very painfully, and yeah. the stuff you know stuff that you don't like about yourself and all that needs to be burned away and right. then, but out of the ashes like something beautiful is coming out and i think you know me being a follower of you like as just an artist and seeing how you're putting that on instagram bro is like super dope because like i said i'm going through it and people 
you know, I don't really put it out there like right. that. So it really gave me, uh, yeah, just strength, man, to know, like, we're not alone right. in this, bro. So, yeah, bro. Yeah. I, mean, I think I, you're doing a good job in, in these thanks, times, man. man. I think just you being vulnerable and, like, kind of sharing that with your fans and with your friends yeah. on your platform already, like, made this happen. You know what I'm saying? I was like, hey, man. We no, gotta dance. Real. Yeah, no, you know I was saying? like, I'm coming up. Right. <laughs> I was like, you know, Sunday, you, re- I was like, you free Saturday? Right. Fourth of like, July. Oh, We're shoot. not doing anything that day because oh. there's gonna be a lot of, a lot of shit going down that day. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Sunday? I bet. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, man. Like, honestly, like, me just being transparent with everything that I'm going through, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a human being. Yes. I mean, a lot of people hold me in, like, and, you know, it, <laughs> a floating god. Stupid. Uh, <laughs> everyone, everyone holds me in such a high regard, but people forget. Like we're human, right? You know, regardless of following, no matter what, we feel shit that everybody feels. Right. Everybody handles it differently too. Like you said, like you're not as open about it, and that's totally fine. Right, right, right. You know, and and for me, like, yeah. I I have to be. Yeah. Because if I held it in, like I would go fucking nuts. Yeah, you know, yeah. and. I did it in a tasteful way too, without being like, right, putting it out. You there, know, but like, in a way, right, in a way that's, uh, you know, connectable, relatable, relatable yes. to people. And I was actually very surprised at the the amount of support that I got for that. Yeah, um, talk about that real you know, and yeah, I mean, just people reaching out to me. Like, um, I went to a really deep and dark place. Um, it was, it was, it was bad. Mm, mm. Well, it was so really what, bad. What were some stuff? that you were holding on to to kind of like get you through the days um days in that right. type of dark place like the days seem long oh the days like, have been long so what, what were some stuff that uh, um <laughs> mac is feeling you yeah, right mac, now <laughs> mac is like i got you dog right i got you it's <laughs> mac okay is mac, nah, Tony thank you mac. if you're just I appreciate listening that. thank you so on much the podcast i love thank it you. so much yeah um it's okay <laughs> I need this. I need this. This this is just gonna be the podcast now. Right. This is right. what it is. It's just, it's just, just a little this moment right now. Little dog petting session. Little therapy <laughs> session. Put the, but yeah, put the man. That's what we're talking about. Okay. I know. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's just hearing breathing. Um, okay, but um, what did I hold on to? Um, I mean, obviously, my family was grounded me. Um, That's huge. Yeah. I also had a lot of unfinished business. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, ha- I knew that with where I was, things could not end if I hadn't taken care of them, right? Mm. And, and got, gained an understanding from them. Mm. And having the conversations I needed to have. Mm. Um, which could be difficult. Which, are very, which were incredibly difficult, yeah. but I had them, you know? And uh, they, they were what got me through. Like, I was able to f- gain clarity and find peace, you know, in having the tough conversations that I thought I wasn't going to be able to have, you know? Yeah. Um, or that I didn't know how I was going to handle, yeah. but I handled them pretty well, and um, yeah. you know, and I'm still going through it, but I'm pushing through. And what helped me actually was working out as well. Um, there yeah. was a moment in quarantine where I was just so malnourished. I was drinking like four sodas a day, and like eating hot Cheetos and popcorn and like candy. And granted, if for those of you who know me, like that's a normal diet. Like, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so that doesn't sound too crazy the to the totally people that ring. know. Yeah, they're like. <laughs> But you've been doing that, right? right? But I was also eating other things, yeah. and I was dancing and being active, but I wasn't doing any of the normal shit that balanced out the awful, right, right. you know? So it was just awful for me. And I was the lowest I've ever weighed. I was really malnourished. And I remember looking at my face after I shaved my quarantine, my first quarantine beard, <laughs> and my face was just, like, pulled back, and I got scared. And I was like, I have to change this. Jeez. Yeah, and yeah. so I hit up one of my crewmates, um, one of my one of my good friends now. His name's uh, Chris Pinedo. Okay. Um, shout out. And uh, yeah, shout outs. <laughs> What's good, Sour Patch Crew? Um, he he's helped me. He's super incredibly fit. Um, nice. th- you know, runs a gym. Uh, and he, I just hit him up, and I was like, I trust you. Like you've you've got it. Can you please help me? And he was like, let's do it. What's your aim? What do you want? And I was Man. like, this. And he's like, let's go. Yo, that's so and crazy. And then I, in my first month, I was able to gain like six or seven pounds and nice. then just and be healthy, eating healthy. It also helped that I was going back to work as well during this mm. time. So, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so working out helped me a lot, talking with my family, um, talking with my loved ones. And then I was able to also, like, I mean, um, with the current events, right, um, you know, the fight against 
you know, new and old racism yeah. right now, all the injustices in the country, I felt that it wasn't the right time to dance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at least for me, like I wasn't about to be putting out myself like, hey, here's me dancing. It just yeah. did not feel yeah, yeah. right. And I would confidently say it wasn't right to mm -hmm. put it out there anyway. So mm -hmm. um, not to say that like my therapy would have been silenced or anything like that, but I didn't even want to do it. I didn't have a desire to like yeah. dance anyway. Yeah. No, so I feel you. I was the same. dance wasn't my therapy through this experience, which is um, crazy, right? Which is crazy, yeah. you know? Um, but going through what I've gone through in the past couple of weeks, I've been able to actually reconnect back to dance and, yes. and let it be, you know, the thing that, that really helps me get out. Um, which is crazy because I'll, I'll crump at home real quick and then it'll like almost, see, it'll bring me to tears. Yo, man, like it, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm just like, uh, it helps, it helps, it helps yeah. speak. Actually, you know, it's crazy. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What well, it's just so interesting because like this, this time is... For like everybody, like yeah. Brandon was on the same on the same tip yeah. uh, when we were talking with him, and it's just like something. It's like the whole. Um, it's like the uh, the air yeah. is different. Yeah. The, the environment is different, mm -hmm. and um, it's yeah. something that your body and your mind have to like really adjust yeah. to how to deal with what what's going on, and. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting time for sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cuz nobody really knows right how to react with this much. Right. This yeah. amount of garbage going on. Yeah. yeah. And it also didn't help when you would watch people not know how to read the room. So, right. you'd see them on Instagram and they'd be they'd be popping off and you're like, yo, in in dance and you're like, it's not. You shouldn't be doing that right, right now. Right, like, right. Like it's just not the time. It's like, yo, you know? chill. And I was like, I'm just I'm good. Like I felt good on it. I couldn't watch dance. I couldn't even watch dance. So right. I was just like, I can't do this. Yeah, and it's, you know and I think for me like it's, it's it's such a good thing to talk about because at the level that we're at, mm. you know, people think, you know, oh you'll just uh, dance and feel good about yourself but it's kinda of the opposite yeah. with almost all of us. Like we couldn't dance. You yeah. know, like when I first saw uh george floyd and all that stuff yeah. was happening like i didn't dance for like a week like, yeah it was hard you know Couldn't without it. feeling so angry and right it took a while to really understand again like oh yeah that's why i danced mm -hmm. to express real right. life current event situations mm -hmm. you know instead of like the winds or right. practicing a skill you know so it took a time it took some time but no oh, yeah yeah man no, it's, it's really interesting and even comforting to hear you too like uh in a weird way like say like it's okay like to like not feel your dance it's mm -hmm. okay to feel like the the burden of it to, to mm -hmm. feel like the weight of like the world because yeah it's crazy times and um maybe the answer isn't always to just like fix it right you know? i think sometimes the, the answer is just to absorb it mm -hmm. and really yeah like understand like this feeling you know and mm -hmm. yeah because i i totally feel you bro like um i think yeah it was the same with me like now i'm barely starting to find my love for dance again right. for the skill and all that but yeah it was like two weeks of just straight like <laughs> yeah no <laughs> word yeah yeah no i feel it i mean yeah i've been i've been trying to pick up new things i mean just to kind of obviously like as a new kind of therapy as well you know mm. um i've been trying to tap into crump and i mean I'm, I'm glad we're meeting up you know what i'm saying um yes i've been actually and it's not even like strictly related to dance like i actually hit up one of my crewmates for like japanese lessons so i was like love it i would call her like midnight my time so it'd be like 4 p.m her time because she mm. lives in japan right mm. now and we, I got my notebook and I was like learning how to write kanji and like, you know, like write, write, learn how to write sentences like Ooh. days of the week. I was like learning and I was like, this is feeding me, you yeah, know, like learning a new sure. language and investing into myself in that way, you know, um, yeah. because I knew that one day, like, I mean, I'd be able to utilize that. Mm -hmm. um, Cause like, and again, like it was new information. I was still taking in something new. Yeah. wasn't dance related, but right. again, I didn't care to dance. Right. But hey, at least language, as far as that goes, right. like if I were to pick that up, I could then communicate. Right. It's, you it's know, still certain somehow things. related to dance. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, still, yeah. Eventually, yeah. it would get there. Right. It would get there. You would relate but, um, it to your dance career. So yeah. It's, it's all connected. <laughs> it's interesting to see how, like, you could like your voice isn't always through dance like i think mm -hmm. as dancers some people think that oh if i'm a dancer anytime i need to say this grandiose big thing 
it has to be through like some sort of dance. Yeah, yeah no. And dance yeah. is a voice, but it's not your only voice. Right. And so Which sometimes you get into these situations where, you know, that isn't the thing you want to say. That right. Isn't, and that's okay. I, mm. I don't think as dancers you always need to react in mm. dance. You right. No, totally. In something completely different. Yeah. You can... Yeah, it's 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 interesting because I think I think our society thinks or, or our community thinks mm-hmm. that if you're in this community you have to do that. Right. And uh, it's really just not the case as a human. No. Being. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 Besides, um, obviously working out, mm-hmm. and then now we're learning that you're learning Japanese. Were there other things like meditating or reading or stuff that you uh, kind of filled your time? I mean, I played mad video games. <laughs> <laughs> like and that's hard, another one. You yeah. know, and it was it was uh, <laughs> it was cool because I actually reconnected with friends that I haven't talked to in probably like three or four years. Yeah. And then as soon as you know quarantine was kind of happening, I was just like reconnected with them and I was talking to them every day and like they've become very much a part of my life, mm. um, like everyday life. We'll just pop into you know I'm pretty sure we've heard of. Uh, mm-hmm. Discord, you yeah. know, yeah, and you just, yeah. we just conversations. Yo, how was your day? Because some of them work at like you know work as nurses, some work mm-hmm. for the government, um, mm-hmm. you know, and same as me, like work at a restaurant, wherever. Um, so shout outs to my crew, That's so uh, to my Discord crew. You know what I'm hey. saying? Um, but yeah, like just playing video games like that um, has helped me. Um, but then it got to a point where I was like, okay, I can't. I right. Can't just, like, do it all, <laughs> you know, all the time. You know, obviously like Netflixing. Like, okay, but that's it. That was the connection. You know, with for for me, my younger sister, yeah. Um, yeah. like me and my younger sister connecting, like watching shows and, and all that. It's still okay. Right. Oh yeah. Especially yeah. Especially when quarantine hit, like. Yeah, oh, we had like nothing like, to do, right? Like, all right, this is the time to super lab and super right. get into like a new hobby. Like, no, right. like, it's, it could be also a time to chill. Like, yeah. Yes, especially with us traveling and mm. all that. Like, yeah, I felt some weird pressure mm. to to teach really or like, share yeah, like, like that. I learned. Yeah, that happened to me in the beginning, too. Like, I kind of, like, looked at it, and I saw a lot of people teaching online. And Mm. I remember just being like, yo, for the hell of it, I'm going to teach, like, a random class. Like, I don't Mm. care. Like, I'm not. And hella people were asking me for donations, like, or asking me to, like, hey, like, do you have a Venmo so I can? And I was like, yeah, but I never gave it to them because I didn't care. So I was just like, I just wanted to give something, you know, or give people something to do. Mm. Mm. Um, And then I also offered, like, online privates and stuff. But then, again, like, as time passed, like, and the world started like the ball started yeah. rolling yeah um it was like we need to put this shit on hold real right. quick like this right, is not right, the right. time right you know exactly. like this is not the time and everybody was understanding everybody was like you know what no like i'm in the same boat i don't feel the desire let's, let's come back to this yes and i was like yeah like because i'm invested you know like i'm i'm happy to do it we can do it later you know yeah whatever it may be um but yeah so like that's that's that was kind of like the journey through it all mm-hmm. but like not saying that we're coming out of it, but at least with where we're at now. Mm. Um, I know we wanted to talk about like building for the future, like yeah, you know where, where do we want to like, go? What, what's the phoenix looking what's the like phoenix, for you? What's the phoenix looking like? You know, like I had <laughs> conversations all last year um, about things that I could be doing. Mm. You know, and you know, with, it, you know, conversations with my ex, like you know, she would be like, "You can do this if you want. Like, you could do this by yourself. You don't need these other avenues." And I was mm. like, "But in my mind, because it was the only thing that I knew, mm. I was like, no, like, I gotta use it. They have the platform. Like, they have the reach. Like, whatever, da da da. Which I mean is valid in its own way. Yeah. But she was very right. Yeah, she was super right. Yeah, because right now, I've been able to make more money in dance." than I did ever yes, teaching at like a studio regularly yeah. you know what I mean like getting paid like we can really shit money you know what I'm right. saying like you know and just like <laughs> and I mean hey like it's it is what it is like you know people reaching out to you privately like you, they pay you what you're worth yeah. you know you yeah. define your worth and yeah. I didn't truly know my worth Bro. even when she saw it you know yeah. and and also my friends um as well like who were business owners and being like nah like you could do this and I was like nah like I need to win this competition I gotta do these things they're like but you've won all these already bro, you know and I was like life, I was like nah like <laughs> I, got, I gotta win the next one just so that people could like view me in this way and he's like nah you don't gotta do that you yeah. just kinda gotta do it yeah. you know just do this shit and then you know and in that experience he's like look at this guy who's like, he makes thousands of dollars in dance mm. not gonna name names but this guy, this guy, that guy over he there. makes, 
I'm talking to you. No, I'm saying we're talking about that. We're talking about you. Um, no, this dude and, and this guy like when we no. talk about when we talk about merits. Yeah. <laughs> when we talk about merits, right? Yeah. He's like, has he won a fraction of the competitions that you have? Mm. No. Mm. Does he have a quarter of the skills that you have? No. Mm. Does he have the respect that you have? Mm. No. In the streets. Right, in the streets, you know, like in, in business, yes. Right, right, right. I was like, but does on, you know, as skills wise, like proving yourself in this way, no. Why does he make more money than you in dance? And I was like, it's the marketing. Fuck. Yeah, I was like, damn. But also, he defined his worth. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so for me, I'm defining it now. Yeah. And yeah. I've been able to do that. Yeah, bro. I mean, you know, and put myself in the position. So, like, I've got students like all over the world. Like, I had a private yesterday at 2 p.m. My homie in Thailand woke up at 4 a.m. just to have a private with yeah, me. And, that, that and he was like, good morning. Man. And I was like, oh, my God. Somebody crap. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, you're incredible for being awake for this. Right. I Friends in Australia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would have like, been, like, on my last game. War zone. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, and then been knocking out. But, yeah, like, people in Australia, people in Portugal, like, people all over the world are, like, interested. And I never thought they would be. Yeah. You know? And now I know. Yeah. No, I wish I, mean, I knew I, sooner. I hear you, bro. I'm on the same uh, wavelength. Like, mm-hmm. had a tough conversations about that, too. And, yeah, man, like, just knowing our worth kind of, like, through competitions or through even, like, more street credit, you know, which yeah. is, like, a never-ending cycle because you're always going to have haters, you know. You're always going to have people to say something else. But, yeah, like, I think right. I did the same, like, talking to the people that really knew me mm-hmm. and really knew my worth, but it was just me. That needed to know my worth right and, and yeah like of course with street culture you kind of want to do it in the guidelines right like, right, right, you, know, right. you don't want to step on yeah you want to pay the respect you want to do it yeah but again like yeah it's it's just it's an interesting topic man because um yeah and um yeah man so i'm just it's just crazy um it, it encouraged me and i hope it encourages uh you guys um as the listeners but again i think for sure know your worth don't mm-hmm. lie about your worth yet. yeah tony he's worth it so <laughs> yeah. people, are, yeah, that, people might listen to this like oh then i'm gonna teach all the no 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 but nah man I think, <laughs> be real with yourself right 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 nah but i think that's super dope to to hear from you bro because that that's um that's big man not even as um as a dancer but like as a man you know i think uh, for me yeah, too human. it wasn't even the problem of like who i saw myself as a dancer is who i saw myself like as a man you mm. know like can i really handle the responsibility of right. being my own brand of yeah. being mm. responsible for my fans without that kind of backing of a platform that mm. uh, they'll, they'll take care of the little stuff like i have to take care of that too, yeah you know? so yeah man i think uh, i see the the, the phoenix of you like rising out you know yeah. um before we close out i think you know i always love to leave it with a gem so with everything probably you're going through or you're learning and you're getting out of what's like one simple advice um that you could give people to uh yeah just just help them out through this tough time um i would say um uh, I mean, just in in particular with what happened to me recently um, and everything that I'm going through, I really, like, and I said it earlier, right, but I had to hold myself accountable. Mm. Like yeah. I said, you know, tear away at myself, tear away at my heart, bare bones, mm. and really be my own harshest critic on how I move, how I interact, what do I see, what do I think is right, but how does that make other people feel, yes. you know? Um, intent versus impact, right? Like, all these things, right? Um, hold yourself accountable because who no matter who you are, you're not an exception. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, that's big, So, man. yeah, that would be it. Yeah. Hold yourself accountable no matter what level you're at, um, high or low. I think um, everyone has a responsibility. And... Uh, yeah, once you hold yourself accountable, I think everything in life would start to be, be a little bit easier. And you have me and Tony here kind of venting our hearts out, you know, a little bit yeah, yeah, on little this bit, podcast. Bit, you know, know get a little emotional, but for real, man, I think 
especially for people that look at us in a certain light um yeah we're humans man and i yeah. think um just yeah man i've been telling people just be more kind to to people um really just stop being so demanding about our freaking skill and like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really see us as humans first mm-hmm. please and um yeah uh, we're, we're trying our best to to serve you guys but yeah, yeah be patient with us mm-hmm. you know especially like you know i just want to encourage you too bro like yeah man i think we have to be like graceful to ourselves you know like true um, true like in the culture that we live in like it's just so rare to find like strong masculine role models to even look up to Mm. you know and i feel like in this generation we are gonna be that that bridge builder or like you know so the stuff that we go through is finally people that's gonna like look up to us finally can look up to us in another way you know Mm. because that's a that's what i felt like was that like man i was looking up but there was nothing to really look up about keeping yourself accountable mm-hmm. or responsibility. So, yeah, man, um, that's one thing that I want to leave you guys with, too, is mm-hmm. forgive yourself. Um, just know, you know, you guys are doing the best that you can. Of course, you can do better. But, yeah, like Tony said, hold yourself accountable. And yeah. with the closing words, we got Rev, and we'll be out of here. Yes, guys, thank you so much for joining us. I wasn't expecting the camera to go back to me, but <laughs> thank you so much to uh, thank you so much to Tony. We, we needed uh, that comic yeah. relief. Yes. <laughs> don't don't fuck with us. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us. Make sure you guys follow the Beast Camp on Instagram, mm-hmm. on Facebook, all that good follow stuff. Yeah. Tony, please. Yeah, yeah. Follow Tony, and that's it. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you for the next episode. Peace Peace out. On Dragon Ball Z.